Hi everyone, it's Lily Bell from Melbourne, Australia. I hope you are all well. Well, it's 10 a.m. and it's a very cold, wet winter's day here. I'm aching all over. I, I remember my um, my father's mother, my grandmother, used to say when I was a little kid that she could feel it in her waters. And I would think it was a load of utter crap. <laughs> um, and now I understand what she means. Um, <laughs> and I'm 42 years old. And I've been feeling this way since, what, the age of 13. Crazy. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. I'm not complaining. So I've been telling you all about this amazing author, um, I would like to try and pronounce his name and I know a lot of people will say it's so easy to pronounce but I have a lot of problems with pronouncing my words especially the last 18 months and especially the past month so I'm not going to do it to myself but I wanted to show you the first book that I ever read from him. It was actually um, published in I believe 1997, but it's a fantastic book. And there was one chapter that I absolutely loved. I loved the way it made me think. I loved the way it was described, um, how he used a story to convey his explanation. And the entire book's like that. This other book that I'm reading, which... Uh, I did and will um, continue to read. Well, I'm not reading it. I'm actually listening to the audio. Um, I, I do believe in my last video that uh, it was quite interesting that this book came to me and the, I think it was the third chapter. It may have even been the second chapter was about assumptions, which has been a real huge thing in the past three and a half weeks with a lot of things that have gone gone on. And it was like, I, I swear, things come to me, um, especially when I'm at my lowest and I need, I need something. Uh, maybe it's just in my mind. Oh, I just got a message. <laughs> Might be my caseworker. Hold on one minute. Or my plan manager. Or my doctor. Yes, it is my plan manager. Oh, she just has. Oh, you're not going to say it. Oh, maybe. Uh, no, nah. she just got rest well. It's lovely of her. Okay, so I'm going to do this and then I'm going to have my morning medication and I'm going to meditate to try and ease my pain because uh, I don't like taking painkillers. I can only have, I cannot have codeine and so really it doesn't, it's like swallowing a sugar pill. So I might try some heat as well. But Anyway, so I'm going to switch over to the screen now and bear with me. Um, reading, I know, is going to bring on my aura, but I'm really wanting to share this with you guys and I hope that it kind of, um, I don't know, it touches you or maybe it's just me because this is what I love. I love things to do with how we think and how we feel and what makes people tip you know um maybe you guys won't like this at all but maybe it may just reach out to one of you um but I highly recommend his books and he's got so many of them I've only read one completely which is the relationship one and I tend to try and get the audiobook on that one as well um or get someone to read it for me and then um I tend to actually go through all the books um because I just like his writing style. Okay, guys, so I'm going to 
switch and I'll, well, I won't see you, but you'll hear my voice and I'll try and speak slowly and I will try and pronounce my words as clearly and correctly as I can. I have realized in a lot of my videos that even though I think I pronounced even the most basic words correctly, that haven't come out correctly. And it's kind of, it's a little, it kind of crushes me a little bit. Um, but I'm trying not to let it stop me from doing YouTube um, and just trying to remind myself that I am educating and showing people how I am on an everyday basis, no matter what I'm going through. Okay, guys, I'll see you on the flip side. <laughs> okay, guys. Okay, so this is my ebook um, that I have of The Mastery of Love. This is the first book that I've ever read. I sadly cannot read ebooks anymore. I will be reading a chapter to you. I'm going to take it in small little steps. And unfortunately, I will get an aura, but I really, really want to. I'm going to read one chapter. I will be stopping and starting. Please understand that I do have cognitive issues and brain issues. And of late, even pronouncing uh, e words that I think I'm pronouncing correctly may came, come out wrong. I'm going to try my best. And um, okay, so that's. This is the first book and I'm going to very slowly so I don't make anyone sick, motion sickness like I get. I'm going to go past all this. I'm going to start yawning and know it. So I believe it is chapter two. This, all the chapters are amazing. Um, I just got uh, a message from my caseworker. Uh, okay, so let me click on the wounded mind. And here it is. You, I don't know if this is big enough for you guys, but you might even be able to follow along. Uh, there may be some words I know I'm not going to be able to, to actually say, even though they're easy words, so I may make up another word. Or I may struggle. So please, please, please bear with me. Reading is a struggle for me. I used to be a bookworm when I was 18. And yeah, so I'm doing this for you guys uh, and for myself because I love this so much. Okay, here we go. The Wounded Mind. Perhaps you have never thought about it, but on one level or another, all of us are masters. We are masters because we have the power to create and to rule our own lives, just as societies and religions around the world create incredible mythologies, we create our own. Our personal mythology is populated by heroes and villains, angels and demons, kings and commoners. We create an entire population in our mind, including multiple personalities for ourselves. Then we master the image we are going to use in certain circumstances. We become artists of pretending and projecting our images and we master whatever we believe we are. When we meet other people, we classify them right away and assign them a role in our lives. We create an image for others according to what we believe they are. And we do the same thing with everyone and everything around us. You have the power to create. Your power is so strong that whatever you believe comes true. You create yourself, whatever you believe you are. You are the way you are because that is what you believe about yourself. Your whole reality, everything you believe, is your creation. 
you have the same power as any other human in the world. The main difference between you and someone else is how you apply your power, what you create with your power. You may be similar to others in many ways, but no one in the whole world lives her or he life the way you do. You have practiced all of your life to be what you are and you do it so well that you master what you believe you are. You master your own personality, your own beliefs. You master every action, every reaction. You practice for years and years and you achieve the level of mastery to be what you believe you are. Once we can see that all of us are masters, we can see what kind of mastery we have. When we are children and we have a problem with someone, we get angry. For whatever reason, that anger pushes the problem away. We get the result we want. It happens a second time, we react with the anger. And now we know we get angry, we push the problem away. Then we practice and practice until we become masters of anger. In the same way, we become masters of jealousy, masters of sadness, masters of self-rejection. All of our drama and suffering is by practice. We make an agreement with ourselves And we practice that agreement until it becomes a whole mastery. The way we think, the way we feel, and the way we act become so routine that we no longer need to put our attention on what we are doing. It is just by action, reaction, that we behave a certain way. To become masters of love, we have to practice love. The art of a relationship is also a whole mastery and the only way to reach mastery is with practice. To master a relationship is therefore about action. It is not about concepts or attaining knowledge. It is about action. Of course, to have action, we need to have some knowledge or at least a little more awareness of the way humans operate. I want you to imagine that you live on a planet where everyone has a skin disease. For two or three thousand years, the people on your planet have suffered the same disease. Their entire bodies are covered by wounds that are infected and those wounds really hurt when you touch them. Of course, they believe this is normal physiology of the skin. Even the medical books describe this disease as a normal condition. When the people are born, their skin is healthy, but around three or four years of age, the first wounds start to appear. By the time they are teenagers, there are wounds all over their bodies. Can you imagine how these people are going to treat each other? In order to relate with one another, they have to protect their wounds. They hardly ever touch each other's skin because it's too painful. If by accident you touch someone's skin, it is so painful that right away she gets angry and touches your skin just to get even. Still, the instinct to love is so strong that you pay a high price to have relationships with others. Well, imagine that a miracle occurs one day. You awake and your skin is completely healed. There are no wounds anymore and it doesn't hurt to be touched. Healthy skin you can touch feels wonderful because the skin is made for perception. Can you imagine yourself with healthy skin in a world where everyone has a skin disease? You cannot touch others because it hurts them and no one touches you because they make the assumption that it will hurt you. If you can imagine this, 
Perhaps you can understand that someone from another planet who came to visit us would have a similar experience with humans. But it isn't our skin that is full of wounds. What the visitor would discover is that the human mind is sick with a disease called fear. Just like the deception of the infected skin, the emotional body is full of wounds. And these wounds are infected with emotional poison. The manifestation of the disease of fear is anger, hate, sadness, envy, and deception. The result of the disease is all the emotions that make humans suffer. All humans are mentally sick with the same disease. We can even say that this world is a mental hospital. But this mental disease has been in this world for thousands of years. And the medical books, the psychiatric books, and the psychology books describe the disease as normal. They consider it normal. But I can tell you, it is not normal. When the fear becomes too great, the reasoning in mind starts to fail and can no longer take all those wounds with all the poison. In the psychology books, we call this a mental illness. We call it schizophrenia, paranoia, psychosis. But th these diseases are created when the reasoning mind is so frightened and the wounds so painful that it becomes better to break contact with the outside world. Humans live in continuous fear of being hurt, and this creates a big drama wherever we go. The way humans relate to each other is so emotionally painful that for no apparent reason we get angry, jealous, envious, sad. To even say I love you can be frightening but even if it's painful and fearful to have an emotional interaction, still we keep going. We enter into a relationship, we get married and we have children. In order to protect our emotional wounds and because of our fear of being hurt, humans create something very sophisticated in the mind, a big denial system. In that denial system, we become the perfect liars. We lie so perfectly that we lie to ourselves and we even believe our own lies. We don't notice we are lying and sometimes even when we know we are lying, we justify that lie and excuse the lie to protect ourselves from the pain of our wounds. The denial system is like the wall of fog in front of our eyes that blinds us from seeing the truth. We wear a social mask because it's too painful to see ourselves or to let others see us as we really are. But those barriers are also kept us inside, restricting our freedom. Humans cover themselves and protect themselves. And when someone says, you are pushing my buttons, it is not exactly true. What is true is that you are touching a wound in his mind and he reacts because it hurts. When you are aware that everyone around you has emotional wounds with emotional poison, you can easily understand the relationship of humans in what the Taltecs call the dream of hell. From the Taltec perspective, everything we believe about ourselves and everything we know about our world is a dream. If, if you look at any religious description of hell, it is the same as human society, the way we dream. Hell is a place of suffering, a place of fear, a place of war and violence, a place of judgment and no justice, a place of punishment that never ends. These are the human versus humans in a jungle of predators, humans full of judgment, full of blame, full of guilt, full of emotional poison, envy, anger, hate, sadness, suffering. We create all these little demons in our mind 
because we have learned to dream hell into our own life. Each of us creates a personal dream for our own self, but the humans before us created a big outside dream, the dream of human society. The outside dream, or the dream of the planet, is the collective dream of billions of dreamers. The big dream includes all the rules of society, its laws, its religions, its different cultures, and the ways to be. All of this information stored inside our mind is like a thousand voices talking to us at once. The Taltecs called this Militote. The real us is pure love. We are life. The real us has nothing to do with the dream, but the Militote keeps us from seeing what we really are. When you see the dream from this perspective and you ha- and if you have awareness of what you are, you see the nonsense behaviour of humans and it becomes amusing. What for everyone else is a big drama, for you becomes a comedy. You can see humans suffering over something that is not important, that is not even real. But we have no choice. We are born in this society. We grow up in this society and we learn to be like everyone else, playing nonsense all of the time, competing with mere nonsense. Imagine that you could visit a planet where everyone has different kind of an emotional mind. The way they relate to each other is always in happiness, always in love, always in peace. Now imagine that one day you awake on this planet And you no longer have wounds in your emotional body. You are no longer afraid and to be who you are. Whatever someone says about you, whatever they do, you don't take it personally and it doesn't hurt anymore. You no longer need to protect yourself. You are not afraid to love, to share, to open up your heart. But no one else is like you. How can you relate with people who are emotionally wounded and sick? with fear and that's all I'm going to read of this chapter there's a lot more so it's pretty deep but it's yeah I'm, I'm not I, I I will admit when that brings up about the different mental illnesses like schizophrenia and stuff like that I'm not quite sure if that sits well but I do believe that this person is trying to say that that we break, our minds break. Um, So I'm not too sure about that. Maybe you guys could um, tell me what your thoughts are on that section of this. Okay, so I didn't actually read the entire chapter um, because it was getting a little bit too much for me. Also, um, I then thought about copyright issues and so I thought I'll just I won't read the whole thing so now all you have to do is watch the video right through like press the the thumbs up comment and please make sure you're subscribed if you do those things then your name will automatically go into a draw to win an ebook of this delivered straight to your email there's only going to be one winner and I will probably do it next Thursday that's Australian Thursday but I'll do a quick video at least one two days before that letting you know exactly what time so you if you're over in a different country you can work out um, when I'm going to be on and I'll be coming on live you don't have to be there um, to to win. Uh, if I draw your name out and you're not there, um, just make sure you watch the video. I'll give you um, a couple of days um, to get in touch with me. And if I haven't heard from you after that, then I will redraw and do another person. Okay, guys, I hope that this is something that someone... One of you at least would like to win. It's uh, it's very, very good, especially if you're struggling with relationship or ships. Um, but it's just, just a great book, to be honest. 
and I would love to know what you think of it. So, okay, guys, take care. Remember to love and respect yourself. And if you're having a bad day, remember there's always tomorrow. And don't be afraid to seek help. That is actually being very brave and uh, strong. Okay, guys, take care. Love you lots. From Melbourne, Australia, Lily Bell. Mwah.